Hi everyone, this is Neil Reiterter, also known as the Wax Whisperer. Thank you for joining me in my latest video. This is of a very complex case, uh, perhaps the most complex case I've seen this year, of a patient who attended with what I suspect to be an extremely rare um, external auditory canal cholesteatoma. And during the course of uh, the video, as you're watching the procedure, I'll explain in more detail what this is. Um, you can get a uh, middle ear cholesterol which again is rare, but it's uh, in comparison to uh, uh, an auditory canal cholesterol it's more prevalent. And just to give you some statistics, um, in terms of patients that attend um, otological clinics, so uh, audiology or ENT, it's about 0.1%, uh, so one in a thousand people um, attend with an external auditory canal uh, cholesterol so it, so that's an extremely low number. So, um, and in terms of the general public, um, it approximately accounts for 0.15 cases per 100,000, um, whereas the more typically found middle ear cholesterol is 9.2 cases per um, 100,000. So it's extremely rare that you have a patient who attends with this condition that you're going to see, you won't see it straight away. Uh, and I was completely oblivious to the fact that this patient had this condition until we cleared their ears out. But do, do, do continue to watch because it's a really interesting case. Now, this patient, just to give you a backstory, they've been suffering from a block to right ear for quite a while now. And they last saw a specialist, I think a week ago, um, and the patient advised that they spent about 20 minutes in the ear and they couldn't budge, um, they couldn't really remove anything. And in fact, they were struggling to enter the ear. And you, you'll see already this patient's got a completely collapsed ear canal, probably slightly uh, inflamed as well, but you, the ear canal's completely shut. Um, so getting access into this ear is so difficult. And the specialist that they saw last week really struggled. Um, to the point where I don't really think they did much because when I first entered the ear, I could see the wax and the dead skin at the entrance of the ear and it didn't look disturbed. It just looked um, circular. It didn't look like uh, it managed to insert an instrument into the ear. Um, they were advised to use olive oil drops, um, but the patient's really suffering. So they went to see their GP and uh, their GP actually um, heard about me. Um, I think they watched my videos and recommended that the patient come and see me. So this patient is 98 years of age. Uh, you wouldn't think it when you see them, they're, uh, they just look half their age, if truth be told. And um, I explained to them straight away, this is gonna be a complex case. I didn't know they had a, a, a canal cholesterol but just because the ear was so narrow, getting access on there was so difficult. Um, so, what we're having to do is to stretch the ear canal open the entrance and the way we do that we use the endoscope the side of the endoscope to stretch the cartilage of the ear canal um, open which then allows me to insert the instrument and at this stage you can see at the bottom there's some blood there it's kind of um, kind of it's I wouldn't say it's crusted and dry but it's not weeping so immediately here I'm thinking well, what's going on there's more than meets the eye um, with this particular case and I've used an ear hook and a Jobson horn initially to chisel away the entrance. The wax was really dry and dead skin, should I say. It's very dry near the entrance and it wouldn't suction. So I had to chisel it away and I removed it. Um, and now I'm trying to get the fine end suction probe into the ear canal. And you saw there, it was really, really difficult just getting this instrument in. But the fine end is not good enough. So the fine end is a, a small suction tube um, and we attach it to the standard Zollner suction tube. We normally used to perform microsuction. Uh, a standard Zollner suction probe, the internal diameter, give or take, is about 1.7 mil, whereas the fine end is about 1 mil. So it's almost half the, the internal diameter, which therefore means it's obviously considerably less powerful. But it's narrower. Um, it's uh, as the, the entire uh, outer diameter of a standard Zollner suction probe is about 2.1 mil whereas uh, a fine is about 1.28 mil. So again, it's about a millimetre thinner. So it's it's useful to for entering um, narrow spaces like this ear, but it's just not powerful. So as the procedure evolves, um, I, I managed to get the full zone of suction probe in there. So I, was, I didn't think that would be possible, but we managed to get it. Um, 
in and it really did help the procedure. But at the moment, I'm just persisting with um, the ear hook, the Jobson horn at the fine end. And as you're watching this, when there's a key moment, I will come back to it, but I'm just going to explain what a canal cholesterol is. So there's two types of cholesterol that can occur in the ear. The first is your more typical um, cholesterol We call it kind of, you call it a middle ear cholesterol That's when your eardrum gets sucked inwards. And when your eardrum gets sucked in, so when I say your eardrum gets sucked in, imagine you're on an aeroplane and you're descending on the aircraft. The air pressure in the aeroplane um, is greater than the air pressure uh, behind the, the, the eardrum in the middle ear when the aircraft is descending. So it, it causes your eardrum to, not all of us, but it causes the eardrum to buckle inwards, um, especially at the top part of the eardrum, um, the flaccid part, um, the part of the seed of the attic. And when that eardrum sucked in, um, and it, it kind of happens to the majority of us when we fly, but some, for some people it happens day to day. Um, and that's because their eustachian tube, the pressure equalizing tube, uh, that connects the middle ear to the back of the nose is blocked. And if that's blocked, there's no air entering the middle ear. So it creates a vacuum, just like when you're on an aeroplane and the eardrum gets sucked in. So that's a very brief description. But when your eardrum's sucked in at the top, it creates a pocket. Now, skin that lines the eardrum uh, and the ear canal, as it dies and sheds, it's evolved to migrate out of the ear. Otherwise, everyone's ears would be full of dead skin, just like this patient. Um, so when you've got a retraction pocket at the top of the eardrum, um, I'll come back to that. So this is the moment I've managed to get the full suction probe in. You can see this is the full standard side solar suction probe, and I've managed to get this in. And this, what I'm removing now is all squamous um, epithelial keratinous tissue. So again, I'll explain that in more detail. Essentially, it's dead skin accumulation, dead keratin accumulation that's failed to come out of the ear. So when you've got a retraction of the eardrum at the top, skin that would normally migrate off the eardrum and out of the ear, it, it falls into the retraction pocket and it gets trapped and it can't escape. And then this skin plug, it can um, get infected and it can grow into the middle ear space. It can then grow upwards towards the brain. It can grow behind the ear into the mastoid bone. Um, and it, it can be life-threatening, uh, a canal flesh term. It can... Um, disease and um, uh, erode the middle ear structure, so the ossicles, the facial nerve, the balance organ. Um, it can cause, it can go upwards towards the brain, as I mentioned, it can cause potentially a brain abscess, meningitis, uh, or it can invade the mastoid bone and lead to mastoiditis. Um, so it, it can be a very um, serious condition if left untreated. So uh, that's your standard cholesterol but this is slightly different. This is a uh, ear canal cholesterol and I'll just repeat those stats. Um, one uh, in a thousand cases um, that attend ENT and audiology will have this condition and in the general public it represents 0.15 cases per 100,000 compared to a normal cholesterol which is about 9.2. I've got the stats in front of me here per 100,000. So a canal cholesterol is when the cholesterol doesn't form near the eardrum or in the middle ear, but in the ear canal. So why does that happen? Now, there's many theories. It's it, multiple reasons, really. It's multifactorial, but it can happen post-surgery or post-trauma to the ear. So the skin can get inflamed and stop migrating. Um, there's other uh, reasons, potentially, where some patients lose the ability for the skin to migrate. So that uh, typically, as, the, as we get older, the skin... Um, does it migrate out of the ear as well, or patients who have gone radio, uh, radiotherapy? Um, it could be certain parts of the ear canal uh, have uh, reduced blood flow. Um, so that can normally happen uh, at the inferior canal wall, the bottom of the, the ear canal. So the most common place for a canal cholesterol is what we call the posterior inferior auditory canal. So the inferior part of the ear canal is the floor of the ear canal. Um, which is where this patient had theirs, and the posterior part is the back part. So the, the back bottom part of the ear canal. So that's where the skin has that slowest migration um, and a bit more reduced blood flow in that area as well, especially in elderly patients. Um, if you've got a narrowing of the ear, so stenosis, so the skin doesn't migrate. Um, if you're using cotton birds and you know poking in your ears and causing a trauma, um, that can all lead to a canal cholesterol. So when the skin stops, or you could have an abnormality, you can have a little trench, divot, a little uh, pothole in the ear canal, so skin falls in there. But 
essentially uh, an uh, auditory canal cholesterol occurs when skin fails to migrate out of the ear canal and it, it remains attached to the ear canal and then the skin the keratin itself um, it releases enzymes you've got bacteria feeding off it and it releases toxins and acids into the ear and then that starts to um, damage all this the layer of skin that lines the ear canal um, then it can start to invade um, the bone and start causing a diseasing of the bone, necrosis of the bone. So essentially, uh, canal cholesterol is when skin um, within the ear fails to migrate, it gets trapped for whatever reason, so it could be self-inflicted, it could be trauma, it could be post-surgical, it could be radiotherapy potentially, it could be age, poor blood flow. And because the skin fails to migrate, the skin releases enzymes and acids and bacteria feeds on the skin and that also releases acids and um, enzymes and this can start to um, damage the, the remainder of the skin, the skin barrier, the bone gets exposed, the bone then gets infected and it begins to die and it uh, erodes um, and it can be very very dangerous um, if it's not treated and a canal cholesterol can start going anteriorly so towards the TMJ, the jaw joint. It can go posterior, so to the, the opposite direction, to the mastoid bone. It can grow superiorly towards the brain, um, to lead to a brain abscess, although that's less likely to occur with a canal cholesterol, especially in comparison to middle ear cholesterol. Um, and it can invade the middle ear space. It can go towards the eardrum and invade the middle ear cavity. Again, it's probably less likely to do that, but it is possible. Um, now, you can see, I'm just removing this. This is all dead skin, it's not earwax. Um, of course, if you've got an obstruction in the ear, so you've got a foreign body or really hard in earwax, that will also stop the migration of skin. So if the skin stops moving in the ear and stops to migrate, there's always a possibility of it then leading to a canal cholesterol. And you need to distinguish a canal cholesterol from uh, other ear pathologies. So, for example, a keratosis obturans. Now, a keratosis obturans... Um, how, you, how do you differentiate that from an ear canal cholesterol? So an ear canal cholesterol is generally more localised. So it's a specific part of the ear canal. Um, you get ulcerations of the skin, so a breakdown of the skin, exposed bone. And typically with canal cholesterol, you get um, uh, some discharge, some mucoporin discharge, which the patient has has hurt. We're cleaning that up. Um, with a uh, Keratosis obturans. And the keratosis obturans is when you get an accumulation of a dead skin and it forms into a plug and it starts to widen and expand in the ear canal. So, uh, keratosis obturans is more um, peripheral, it, it, it kind of compresses against the complete entire canal wall all the way around. Um, whereas, a uh, canal cholesterol is more localized, it's more at a specific point, generally at the bottom part of the ear canal, as I mentioned. Uh, a keratosis obtrans, you don't always get, any, it's not a landmark, you get discharged, but you get quite severe pain with that and you get widening of the ear canal. So not, um, the skin's not, underlying skin's not breached, it's just a widening of the bony part of the ear canal. With a, keratos, with a canal cholesterol, the skin's actually breached and it reveals the exposed bone. Now, you can see the eardrum at the, at the top and at the bottom, this is like a, an underground, uh, that's where the erosion is, so all that debris you're seeing at the bottom this this shouldn't be there this is all eroded um, and diseased bone and it's created a crater at the bottom of the floor of the ear canal so this should actually be um, uh, a level um, uh, part of bone smooth bone towards the eardrum but the, the canal cholesterol has diseased all that bone the skin's been breached the epithelial layer of skin and the eardrum is at the top, so it's quite an extensive canal cholesterol here. So a keratosis of subtrans, yeah, it just widens the ear canal. It doesn't erode the bone. The skin layer on the ear canal it typically is not breached still. Um, unless you've got a grade 3 or grade 4, you can get some granulation tissue developing. Um, and then you've got other uh, severe conditions. You've got uh, necrotizing or malignant otitis externa. That's... Uh, it's a very uh, severe form of otitis externa. Um, it, it's quite rare, um, and it's more, as I said, although it's rare, if you someone who does have it, it's more likely to occur in patients who are immunocompromised, the elderly, 
or diabetes where there's poor, poor um, blood flow and uh, weakened immune system to fight the infection. That is again very rare. Um, but with that, they normally have a buildup of granulation tissue, so a lot of uh, a, a, a big swelling occurring from the floor of the ear canal, um, so, uh, where the bony part of the ear canal meets the cartilage part of the ear canal, the osseocartilaginous portion, and so that's a malignant or uh, necrotizing or teres externa. Um, and then you can get medial canal fibro fibrosis, also known as um, false fundus. It's almost like a second eardrum. So that can happen uh, secondary to trauma or a surgery. And the ear just develops uh, an additional layer of fibrous tissue. Um, and it f it's like the ear is confused and it thinks it needs to heal the eardrum. So the middle layer membrane of the eardrum the eardrum is made up of three membranes the outer layer is the skin that lines the ear canal the inner membrane is the mucosa membrane that lines the middle ear and the middle membrane is a, a fibrous tissue and after trauma or surgery the ear kind of thinks the eardrum needs to be healed in such a way where it starts over um, secreting fibrous tissue and this uh, normally deep in the ear canal and it kind of your ear it, uh, forms a second eardrum uh, it's the best way to describe it or a thickening of the eardrum but again you it's, it's a different uh, characteristic when you when you when you when you see it you'll know that's uh, medial canal fibrosis the ear canal just looks a lot shorter because this fibrous tissue it comes towards you so what i'm trying to do now is just peel away this crater with all this next layer of skin and we're gonna we're gonna you're gonna see some exposed bone that's quite wet and discharged and there's a bit of bleeding there, a bit of granulation tissue. And we've written to the patient's GP, but I'd really strongly advise them to see um, ENT if possible, if they are able to privately, just because the waiting list at the moment in the NHS is 12 to 18 months and this patient can't really wait that long. Because as I said, this if this, well, and hence why I'm trying to clean out as much as possible. Sometimes these are performed under local anaesthetics, uh, um, um, anaesthesia, in some cases, uh, depending upon the extent and how painful it is for the patient, it's done under general anaesthetic. Um, normally, uh, a CT scan is also performed so they can see the extent of the widening. It should show up on the CT scan. You'll see this, um, uh, the missing bone, uh, especially in comparison, comparing it to the opposite ear. And at this stage, I'm actually standing up and I'm looking down into the patient's ear. This is, again, it's like a, a, a basement layer. That's another way of describing it. This is the basement layer of the ear canal, um, a trench, a, a massive crater. I'm just using the fine end, just trying to clean away as much accumulation of dead skin keratin that's, that's found itself, it's lodged in here. Um, as the procedure uh, went on, I was getting more comfortable with stretching the ear and getting access. At first, it was really, really tough. I was going to ask um, the patient attended with their care. I was going to ask the, uh, initially, so it was really hard to get the full zonal suction probe in there just to pull the ear back for me, just to help me. The patient wasn't able to do that themselves because they were, for their age, they had although they look great for their age, they didn't look that age, but they did have some arthritis and it'd be very difficult to pull their ear back themselves. But in the end, we didn't need to. So you can see there's ulcerations um, of the floor of the ear canal, so the skin's been broken down. And then you've got exposed eroded bone. So we're just looking into the, this, there's two widenings there this is the first one so this is just at the juncture of the outer third of the ear canal and the inner two-thirds so the outer third of the ear canal is made up of cartilage and the inner two-thirds of the ear canal is made up of a bone and this is we call that the osseocartilaginous juncture so this is the crater number one and we're on the anterior canal wall here and it, there's some hardened keratin so it, with this dead skin, keratin debris, it, over time it can become very hard and rock solid. And I'm just trying to remove that from this region here. You can see there's a bit of bleeding there, a bit of granulation, to underlying granulation tissue. That's fine. We just want to try to get this keratin, keratin debris out. 
So this is trench number one, and then you've got another one more medially beyond this. So I'm just gonna suction this area to get some of this granulation tissue. Granulation tissue is this inflammatory tissue. Um, the patient didn't report any pain and uh, uh, with external auditory canal cholecytoma, uh, it's not all, some patients don't attend with pain, some patients don't even uh, attend with a hearing loss, they just, I've had a case before where there's just a patient attending and they've got a bit of itchiness in their ear and there's a thick layer of skin at the base of the ear canal and you kind of think nothing really of it but when you start, when you peel the skin away you reveal a massive crater and it's hidden by that uppermost layer of skin. So, but patients with colour cholesterol terminal normally uh, um, experience more of a dull pain um, due to the pressure of the dead skin, the build-up of the dead skin. Uh, keratosis obtrans, it's more of an acute sharp pain um, because there's literal expansion of the ear canal and the temporal bone, the bone that makes up and surrounds the ear canal, is the second strongest bone in the body behind the femur. So you can imagine the force of a skin plug, um, which is what occurs in a keratosis obturans. You can imagine the pressure of the skin plug up against the canal wall in order to widen it. You can imagine that being very, very painful. So the eardrum is actually intact. I think it's slightly retracted. There's a bit of skin there, but it's not. It's not there's no um, medial, uh, middle ear. Um, cholesterol Now, again, we're, as you're watching this, the, after I clean the right ear, we're not going to get every little speck out. Um, it's just not possible. This obviously the skin's inflamed as well. I, I, I'm pretty pleased with what I've done actually. Um, no doubt some viewers may not be, but um, I'm very very pleased with this. What we've done, I've cleaned as much debris safely as possible. I think I've cleaned as much debris as I can from the canal cholecytoma, the, 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 the crater. Uh, Any more, the patient will probably need some local anaesthetic because it would be painful. Um, but after I cleaned this, they were so, so pleased, but they, they advised me um, at the beginning of the procedure, they said their left ear, they also felt for the last year, um, they've not been hearing well from their left ear. Um, but they said they don't have any wax in the left ear, but I just had it checked. So again, I'm just going into the crater here. Um, there's some uh, keratin here. You just want to see if I can remove this. And you can see here it's some gra that's some granulation tissue that I just removed. So some inflammatory tissue. It looks like flesh. It's a buildup of connective tissue with its own blood supply. So we we know there's 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 an ongoing infection in this region here, and this is the cliff edge. So this again shouldn't be here, and at the top you can see the skin. That skin is lining the rest of the ear canal and suddenly you've got a cliff edge, it, it slopes down. So, and that skin is just crusted here. So where that skin at the top is, that crusted skin, that should be where the ear canal should be originally. And everything below that skin, it's all eroded bone. So the patient found that bit a bit uncomfortable, but there's a bit of keratin there. So um, I just said, I'll have one more go. I just want to try to remove this hardened keratin, but it might have just been a bit uncomfortable, so I might have left it. I think I, well, I think I did leave it, but and all this we couldn't see before; it was all hidden. So there's, there's, that's where the ear canal should be at the top. Everything below shouldn't be there. There's a bit of, there is a bit of um, soft wax deep in the ear. I'm gonna try and get that, but it's hard getting over this crater. And I said the ear canal is so narrow the entrance, so it's hard to get access there. Going back to the left ear, so I examined their left ear, they were correct, there's no wax, no canal cholesterol. But they had a really severely retracted eardrum. So going back to the eustachian tube, which can be the main cause of a um, an acquired middle ear cholesterol when the eardrum gets sucked in, and that normally occurs because the eustachian tube is blocked. Their left eardrum was severely sucked in. There was no keratin buildup in the attic. Um, Okay, just having another look at that crater. And that's the eardrum. But so uh, I've diagnosed them with eustachian tube dysfunction on that side. So they've given some uh, treatment for that. We did their GP. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video, guys. Take care. Keep well and speak soon. Bye.